Good afternoon. Today is the 9th of November and uh, I'm at a secret location somewhere in Hampshire. Um, with me is Chris from Boats and Engines. Hello. Hello Chris. Um, and uh, you're going to show me around some of your amazing collection. I see you're wearing the Alpha Centauri um, boats yep. um, paraphernalia there, which is good. So today I'm going to be showing you around some of my scrap collection. Well, and, well uh, some people call them cars, some people call them scrap. Yeah, um, these are actually my uh, favourite possessions. I know it's probably not that well looked after, but I love this car. So this is, a, is it an 1887, this one? It is an 87. I, th I think it's an 86 manufacturer, but probably first registered in 87. Yeah, yeah and we've got, it's, so it's an MR2. Um, it's a facelift Mark One MR2 um, with original dealer plates, which uh, I, is the sort of thing which gets me very, very excited. Um, now, Chris, why does it look like this? I mean, you, you did actually on your channel do quite a number of videos of this, didn't you, and, and make it look really nice? Yes. Um, I should explain, if I bought this car today, I wouldn't modify it. I bought this car a long time ago, and this car was £200 and would have gone to a scrap heap if I hadn't bought it. So I had a Mark II MR2 Turbo, which I found to be quite difficult to drive fast. Um, I think they're great cars if you're a great driver, but I'm not a great driver, and the Mark I's much easier to drive fast. So basically I swapped the mechanicals from the Mark II MR2 into this. So we've got a 3SPTE engine which I'll show you. And to get the power to the ground it has big Toyo R888 tyres and flared arches and those are wood swirled arches, fiberglass into the bodywork. Yes, there is a video actually on your channel where you build those arches, isn't there? Yes. Right, so if we walk down the side of the car, well, first of all, we can see you have got the original seats for it, but, but there is a story behind you taking out a passenger seat, isn't there? Yeah, so this was used as my wedding car, and Brilliant. my wife's uh, wedding dress was so big that uh, my wife's not big, her wedding dress was big. No, no, I've, I've, seen, I've seen your wife in video, she definitely, definitely isn't. Um, not big, but her wedding dress would not fit in the car with the seat. Right, okay. <laughs> so, uh, you, let's see what we'll other side of it. We can see that the re re reason why this car is in, in this condition is not because there's anything wrong with it necessarily, apart from something that's um, <coughs> a little bit wrong, as we'll get on well, to later. But uh, um, this is just a, years of co a year of grime, isn't it, essentially? This is, this is just one year of grime, and underneath it actually has pretty much perfect paintwork. And I think it's an example that when you watch a barn find video, and you see a car looking really bad, it's surprising how quickly they can look like that. Yes, and I know. I mean, uh, when I went up to um, Summit Garage um, in Dudley, they had um, um, a Rover 75 on, 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 the, on the, the back of the forecourt that had been there a couple of months, and my gosh, it had yeah. like moss growing on it and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, it, the car, obviously, they'd cleaned it. It was, it was perfect. It's just it'd been sitting there for a couple of months, and it's amazing what happens, isn't it, just after a couple of months if you don't move yeah. a car. Yeah, and, but if, if it's well polished, it will just clean off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? What are these? Uh, oh, oh, this definitely these. This is a bit of wedding, aren't they? These. So these are the wedding ribbons. Right, it's still a, got them on. In actually, in a JDM sunburst pattern. <laughs> yes, e e exactly. Yeah, um, and as you as you say, you've got these big arches on there. You've got these big, so big the tires and wheels on there. Borbot A alloys, so period alloys, and actually all the modifications on this car are. I hate to say it, but probably max power period modifications are tuning mods. Yes. And so, yeah, Borbot, Borbot A's with Toyo Triple Eight, they're the closest you can get to a slick and stay road legal. Yeah, I mean, t I mean, today we definitely wouldn't want to drive a car like this. Maybe, you know, we go around the first roundabout, you'd be sideways, wouldn't you? You would. Um, so if you just, um, if, I, if I move back a bit here, um, and we can, I can have a look, we'll all look at the interior. Just get another shot of this wheel, I think a little bit, get a bit more light here. So if we look in, inside here, you can see interior is actually in very, very nice condition. Um, 
this sort of backs up what uh, what Chris is saying about the fact that um, there really isn't anything wrong with this apart from what we'll just get onto in a bit. Yeah. Um, and uh, which is the reason why this car has been laid up for you know over a year. Um, so you've got uh, an aftermarket um, stereo unit there and some aftermarket gauges, which I think are going to be removed soon, aren't they? Yes, and I've actually got an original Celica Supra stereo doubled in to go in there, which will be a bit more fitting. This was just built as a car for going around the Nürburgring, yeah. which is why it's got a sat-nav stereo in it. Yes, you need to actually yeah. get, find your way around there because it's pretty big, isn't it? Well, you've got to yeah. find your way there as well. Yes, of course. It's in the forest in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'll, I'll we uh, open, up the, open up the bonnet, obviously, because it's an MR2. Mid-engine, rear-wheel rear -wheel drive, two-seater. And we'll see just how wonderful the engine access is on a Mark 1 MR2, which um, isn't wonderful at all. I mean, look at this. This is uh, out of an SW20 MR2, isn't it, this engine? Yeah, that's right. So it's the same engine also used in the Celica GT4. Yeah. So it's a 2-litre turbo. This actually has a hybrid turbo and lots of other modifications. Um, the best it's made on the dyno is 330 at the wheels. So you, is it fr fr 330 horsepower in a Mark 1 MR2? At the wheels. However, that was running bigger injectors and an Apexi fuel controller. I had massive trouble getting consistent fuel ratios on the dyno. So I've actually gone back to stock injectors. So in this, that, this form, it's probably running about 290 horsepower. That's uh, a lot. I mean, the standard engine's about 120, isn't it? Yes, but it it's, it's a 1.6, isn't it? In these, uh, same sort of thing as an A86. Yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, it's about 120, about 120, isn't it? Standard. Uh, standard, yeah, 120 on the four age engine. Um, so this is more than twice that. That's crazy. And actually, on this hybrid turbo setup, um, if I went bigger injectors with the standalone ECU, there's people making close to 400 with this turbo. But yeah. honestly, 300 horsepower in a car that weighs just under a ton is uh, quite fast. <laughs> yes, well, this isn't the only MR2 you've got, is it? It's not. Um, no. Well, we'll take, a, we'll take a, just a, a pause for a second here, and we'll go and see what else is lurking round the side of the shed. So, Chris, what exactly is this? I mean, it, the shape of it kind of looks a little bit like a Ferrari. A little bit. A little bit like a Ferrari. So is it an actual Ferrari 355? Or what exactly is it? Um, I'd say it's beautiful. I think some people would say it's a dog. Uh, a dog? Is... It isn't it like a dog, it looks like a car. Well, <laughs> wait till you see it. You might change your mind. Yes, indeed. Well, it's, it's looking very Ferrari-like so yeah. far, but I mean, with that glass fibre, it does look a little bit like a boat. So this is... Well, I'm good at boats. This you, you are. I mean, obviously, your channel's called Boats and Engines, so maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, well, well, no, it's not, not. It's definitely not a boat now, is it? But uh, yes, this looks like an SW20 MR2 from the top. But um, uh, what has happened? Is somebody's actually put this on, and did they just not finish the project or something? Um, I. I think it's been sat outside for at least 10 years, but as, as we've seen on my other video, you can't really know. Yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got bits of glass missing and, and all that kind of stuff, haven't you? It's I, crazy. I've got most of the bits for it. Yeah. Um, somebody spent, I think, in the early 2000s, a huge amount of money on this. These kits were expensive. Um, I think it's actually a moulding taken from a real 355 and then put on. I know it looks very rough. But I do a lot of fiberglassing. And well, yeah, yes, new, yes, yes, you do. You, you you've got some, you got some pretty nice looking boats on your channel, haven't you? I do, yeah. Yeah, well, I like to think there so. was, yeah. I mean, I've I've seen the, uh, you know, it took you a long time to build the prototype, didn't it? it? Took you months and months, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you're not you're not, you know, inexpert when it comes to fiberglass, which is just as well because I mean, look at look at this. <laughs> it's <laughs> that's going to need a bit of repair, isn't it? Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna need a little bit of filler. So, um, if if we go around this side, I think because I, I think the door that, opens on that. That will go around that side, and we'll have a look, um, just in the 
Well, it used to it used it used to be an interior. I don't know what it is now. Oh, okay, you have to put your hand right down there to get it open. It does actually have moss growing on it. So this is greener than an electric. This is car. like a greenhouse. It's got it's got um, you know, actual kind of plants living in it. Unbelievably, this car is rust free. I don't know how. Get out. No, honestly, it. I've looked underneath, and it's one of the best SW20s I've seen. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll obviously I'll be sending this video over to Matt and Laurie at Laurie's Mechanical Marvels, who are, as, as you know, the experts at SW20 MR2s, particularly very cheap SW20 MR2s. I think this was probably cheaper. Well, we'll have to, yeah, we'll have to have to ask <laughs> about that. But what's going on with the roof? What's it's happened? Just, it's all right. I swear it's been bonded. I'm knocking my car, Joseph. This is, this is fine, it's quality. I, I mean, quality? <laughs> but where's the... They haven't modified the track! No, and this is the really... Oh, they're these horrendous, cars. these wheels! Yeah, that is not oh. nice. Oh! It's not nice. The, the real issue with these cars is people have to fit massive wheel spaces to make them look right. Yeah, because it doesn't look right, does it? And then it will just eat wheel bearings. And well, I'm, that's not I'm, good. I'm not going to do it like that, don't worry. Um, can, can we lift off this back, or is it to be too much of a problem to lift that off? Um, oh, oh, your bonnet's in two parts. It's not finished. Oh. Because this is what I was saying, it's because I was, I was watching this video with my lady wife yes, yesterday, and I was wondering whether or not like someone had ever finished their, their job, or if, you know, because it, it looks like the car's not painted or something, but I mean, I could be wrong. Oh, no, it's not painted. This is raw gel coat. So yeah. Somebody's, they actually got the kit manufacturer to fit the body kit for them and then just left it, did nothing with it. And the car's only done 70,000 miles. I mean, that's quite low mileage this, for a Toyota, isn't it? And 10 years ago, this would have been a reasonably expensive car, I would have thought. Well, obviously not. It isn't now, and you uh, no. got yourself a bargain. But, I mean, this engine looks like it's been at the bottom of a lake. Yeah, I guarantee though, being Toyota, put a battery on it. Oh, look at that spider! Uh, it'll probably don't, don't talk about spiders. We, we might frighten the viewers there. Yeah, there's some nasty stuff living in there. It is like a kind of a little zoo, isn't it, in here? Yes. And uh, there's no, there's obviously no bonnet stay or anything. I mean, this is. Um, are you sure that's a quality fiberglass there? It seems to be wobbling a little bit. It's, it's just not finished. Are you sure? Yeah, you, yeah. I see you have the same every year, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I mean, not defend myself. I mean, like if, we, if we look in here, I mean, you are quite right. I can't, I can't see any rust on it. No. Um, there's obviously huge holes there where the, um, the, you know, the kit's been added on the outside and things. But I mean, this engine's going in the bin, isn't it? Obviously, that engine is going in the bin, or perhaps um, another. YouTuber with several MR2s will buy it. Uh, well, you never know. We're, I will, I will send the it. I'll send the video over to over to Laurie's Mechanical Marvels, and we'll and we'll see. But uh, you know, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's not the sort of engine I think I'd want in my car personally. But uh, it's just me. Oh, oh well, there we are. Um, and uh, can we uh, can we have a look at the underneath the front as well in a second? Yeah. yeah. I'll just pause for a second while we reassemble the bonnet. Right, so the bonnet release cable actually snapped off. So uh, this is the uh, front boot, frunk, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'm I'll just poke that out there for a moment. So if I do accidentally latch it, yeah, don't 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 do that. That's not be won't be good. Um, so I imagine originally in, in an MR2, this would have had some carpet in it or something, wouldn't it? Uh, actually, no. They just had a plastic cover and a spare wheel. Okay, I should have asked Laurie, shouldn't I? He would have told me yeah. um, before I before I came and did my did my research. Uh, that's the is that the brake master cylinder there. It is, yes. Right. Okay. And there's so that, and there's the fuse box there. Yeah. I mean, as you as you as you said, I can't I can't see any holes due to rust in here. I mean, it's um this car's obviously been sitting outside for quite some time. Yeah, and I think that actually says something in the difference between the Mark One MR2 and the Mark Two. Yeah. If a Mark One had been left out in a brief rainstorm it would rust away yeah, they are crazy. absolutely awful but the the 90s toyotas the difference from the 80s to the 90s is huge the sw20s a far better built car yeah yeah the mark one's yeah. nicer to drive mm. but the mark ii is a better built car by far 
Yeah, I mean this radiator's looking a little bit worse for wear, but I mean that's changing. that's been um, that's been out over some time. So that's uh, that's um, the I don't know what to call it, the fake fake Ferrari or whatever it is. Uh, it's a thing. Do you have <laughs> anything sensible that actually kind of works that you can get around in? That's my closest thing to sensible, and it's not sensible. All right, so we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> take a pause here and then we'll take a look at this as well. So this is a 2004 Suzuki Jimny. This is a previous generation car. Obviously, as, as most of you know, um, they built them in this shape for about 20 years, about 1998 to I think it, I think the last ones came out of, of production line about about early 2018. I think it was. Um, the, the engines were slightly changed, you know, to do emissions and things like that. And you could actually get an automatic one of these, although uh, you know those are not not very common. Um, but this one looks like it's not entirely standard, is that right? Um, it's almost entirely standard. The only thing oh, really? changed is actually the tyres, but suspension, everything else, yeah. totally standard. The wheels don't look standard to me either. The wheels are standard from a 2016 Germany. Oh, OK. Is that, is that what they look like on the, on the really late ones? Yes, I've painted them in gunmetal. Oh, which okay. Is why they look different. Normally, they're silver. I mean, these are these are some pretty serious tyres you've got here. Look at the tread on that. I yeah. don't think that's going to fail the MOT due to uh, due, due to low tread depth, is it? It's not, no. No, in, in, indeed. So if we uh, if we take a look uh, take a look inside, um, the paintwork looks quite good actually for a, a bright red car, and it's it's actually it's, it's looking pretty good in here. I but, actually, when I bought this car, it was actually bright pink. Uh, oh yes, I know all so, about that. So it's been uh, compound polished, which is why it looks okay now. It looks it looks great. And obviously, you, you, if you buy a car, just a tip. Obviously, this is a this is a channel where we talk about car buying. You don't buy a car in the rain, do you? You do not buy a car in the rain. I actually bought this knowing it had bad paintwork. Yeah. And knowing that I could just spend a couple of hours running a polisher over it and make it look good. So I got it cheap. Yes, I mean, uh, in the very early days of Wheelie Dealers, they had an MR2, um, but was red, and they spent a, quite a long time actually pol polishing, for polishing it, and getting rid of the of the sort of uh, bloom effect. Yeah, um, and red and yellow paint worse for that, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my um, my my Rover 620 had the same kind of thing where the paint had sort of peeled away and faded, but you know, happens on everything, even yeah. even, even Rovers. Um, Proper, proper, low range gear lever, proper five speed manual gearbox, and a proper handbrake. Um, those are the kind of things I like to see in a car. Um, and then we've got the uh, famous Jimny rear seats. This lever here to pull. Yes. There we are. Um, or I think most owners do what you do. They they, they put one of them down so they've actually got boot space because it's not. I normally not a... don't have any back seats at all. I put them mostly back in for your video. Well, well yes, 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 indeed. I'm missing one bracket, so that's, that's all right. Well, that could say like that because it's very very illustrative. Um, but yeah, I mean, is this the new model is not much bigger than this to be honest. It, it's, aren't you converting? One of these, and, and so it looks like a new model. I am, yes. Yeah. So I'm producing a body kit which converts this to look like the new model. Underneath, uh, they're almost identical, actually. The chassis is pretty much exactly the same. The new one's got some more um, strengthening bars. Suspension's the same. However, I have test-driven the new one, and it's much, much better than this. I don't know what they've done to make it better, but... It is vastly better. It is a new engine in it, the 1.5. It... New engine. Yeah. This is massively underpowered. Um, the new one's adequate. I think I think it's about it's about 85 horsepower in this. Yes, but it feels like less. Yeah, so I, I, obviously because that engine was in production for I don't know how long, 20 years or something, yeah. um, depending on model year, it's differently powered, isn't it? Um, but uh, we'll, maybe we'll fire up in a second, we will we'll see. It, it looks pretty comfortable in here. It's, it looks a lot more comfortable than a, than a Defender or something. It look it reminds me very much of a Suzuki Baleno in here. Um, that's probably no accident because they were... I don't know what Suzuki Baleno is. You don't know what a Baleno is? <laughs> no. Well, you're not the only one. They, they, they were the car that... Um, People sort of tend to forget about him in the 90s. It was a, it was sort of like a an escort sized car. They had a hatch, um, and um, and saloon and estate versions of it. Oh, okay. And they have a, I think that steering wheel. Probably yes. Um, it looks all very familiar. Very very 90s Japanese in here, isn't it? It's um, sort of classic it is, thing. It's a bit. It is a bit cheap, but it's a cheap car. If yeah. You compare it to, say, a Toyota or a Nissan. 
it definitely feels cheap. Yeah, but they were, yeah, they were cheap, weren't they? I mean, they you know, I can't think of anything else on which has been the market in 2004 other than maybe the Fiat Pan and the 4x4, um, which I'm not sure would have lasted as long as one of these. No, I think the Fiat Pan and the 4x4 is probably a better road car than this, by far. Oh, yeah. This is better off-road, so the slightly different market. I mean, you've got a ladder-framed chassis in this. You've yeah. got proper... Um, low range gearing in here you've got rear wheel drive I mean, the, the, pan, the panda's probably front wheel drive most of the time yes, yeah. um, I mean it's, it's I, I wouldn't say it's a bad car but I think you know if, if living around here and uh, you know driving driving my Lady West MG3 today on these roads I mean I'm I wouldn't say it was my favourite thing, um, particularly it's not designed for you know such sort of rough terrain but uh, yes we'll uh, go and have a little uh, um, drive of this in a bit um, so we'll land this bit here because um, I've been I've been talking for far too long. Um, but thank you very much indeed to uh, Chris from Boats and Engines no um, for having me down here. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the Boats and Engines YouTube channel. Uh, write a nice comment about my Ferrari. Uh, your fake Ferrari, sir. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, we'll, we'll do a separate video on. Um, on taking this little, this little one off road, it's done not looking, not looking very muddy. You must have cleaned it for me or something. Uh, this is the first time it's been cleaned this year, especially for you. Well, I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well for to see some, some, some hardcore Jimny off roading action. I'm sure that'll be fun. Um, and uh, yes, my Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, and my website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting. Dot code at UK if it's a source of car for you. It doesn't have to be um, one of one of these, of course. I mean, it, if you really want one, I'm sure I could find one. But uh, that one's for sale. It, uh, it is. Is it is it already for sale? No. No, no. You can't. Make me an offer. You can't. You can't. You can't sell it now. You, have, you won't be able to do your conversion on it. No, I've got big plans. Yes, big indeed. Plans. <laughs> right. Anyway, um, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.